So why so lazy? Let's get your fat ass off the couch and let's do some stuff. How's it going guys? Welcome back to Quentin Timmy. Gun Guy, this is the Why So series. In this series, I ask questions starting off with Why So. Exactly pertaining to the EDC community. This is questions that we get asked, we ask each other and maybe that we should be asking ourselves. So in today's one, I'm doing the Why So Lazy. So this is a follow-up one to the Why So Specialized one in which we spoke about specializing in something and then lacking in other parts so now we're going to address those other parts and why are you still sucking at those parts because you are lazy so this isn't going to be a nice video i'm not going to lick your ass we're going to do some examples of being lazy and things to remedy that so i've got a few few examples here that we are going to discuss if you are looking or watching my channel or following me I'm, I'm sure that you're part of the same community as I am. So the examples that I'm going to give you is probably going to be of relevance to your life and everyday life. So let's improve that life and cue all the stereotypical uh, quotes and let's get going. So Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world, but I want you to be the change in your life. Now you know that where you are lacking, where you are sucking at. So I need you to work on that specifically. So we all have a limited time on earth. We have a limited time in each day as well. So you need to use that economically. And then at the end of the week, you should be able to say, okay, I did this and I worked on this and I didn't just sit in front of the couch as soon as I got home and I had my dinner. I think that's an absolute waste of time. Now everyone needs some downtime. They need to relax and unpack, but I think you still still need to use some of that time economically. By doing that, you can use this towards a goal. So if you just sit in front of the TV or sit in front of social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, watching my, my videos, but I don't have that many yet, um, I think that's an absolute waste of time. You could be doing something else as well. So things like, let's say that you know that you have a bit of a flinch. You want to do some dry firing. You can do that whilst watching TV. I don't think that's great family time anyway. But if you if you do have that uh, have that family time, make it, make sure that your firearm is safe whilst you're watching TV. You can just follow targets. Okay, that guy's a bad guy. I'm going to take him out. Next up, the next person that's going to come out, I'm going to draw from consumers and then take out that person. That person is going to be a threat. That's just a quick example of using your time economically. Um, I did a video on this where I did um, advantages of load shedding, what you can do during load shedding time. So this is just normal dry firing. Let's say that you, you do everything perfectly, but you can see it's safe. So, but you can see that your reloads suck. So now we're going to start working on reloads. So now, Let's say you've just run dry, now I need to reload. How easy is that? So you can do this in front of the TV, you can do this while sitting on the toilet, whatever you want to do, you can work your, work your reload quite easily. Stupid example. Exercising, you need to exercise. You need to be able to have that cardio ability, have strength to be able to take on an attacker. So if you are going to be lazy, not being fit, if you are going to guess the first five seconds that you get your ass handed to you by an attacker, I think that's an absolute waste of time of your life. So if you're not using your life, you are going to lose it. There's always going to be someone better than you. If you've ever done anything competitively, whether it's shooting, fighting, swimming, tennis, whatever sport that you did, if you haven't done any of that competitively, you won't realize that there's always going to be someone better than you. Doesn't matter how good you are, how much work you put in, um, how much effort you put in, how much prayers you sent up, there's always going to be someone better than you. You might be the best on the day, you might be world champ. All that means is on that day, you were the best person. The next day, you're probably not going to be the best anymore. So imagine being on the street, and there's someone that's better at you at everything else. Everything that you do, they are better than you. So imagine 
walking into that person they, and they want to rob you. They want to take your life. Is that going to be a nice scenario for you? And you could have put in more of an effort just to survive, just putting, putting in the time and then being the best version of yourself that you can be. But you were lazy. Now for some more practical examples. So if you've been following this channel for a while, this is my today's special Rossi, this is safe. You know that I carry revolvers for quite a few years. Now I started off with this little 38 special Rossi revolver and then I moved on to the 357 6 inch Taurus. So when I carried this, you know how much flack I got from guys that have pistols. Saying that this is a little sissy gun, what am I doing with this? They really think that I can defend my life using just 5 rounds. So you know how many people gave me trouble about this? Quite a few. Do you, do you know how many people, people actually carried their pistol on them? Zero. Because if anyone that carries their firearm on them knows that if you carry a firearm, then that's probably going to be able to save your life. If this firearm is sitting in your safe, then it's not going to save your life. So anyone that's actually carrying won't give much flack to anyone else or give them a hard time about carrying any type of firearm that's probably going to save their life. Those people that gave me the most trouble about this, all of their firearms was in the safe. Now what's those 15 rounds going to do to save your life if that's not on you? Practical example. Next up, so let's say you are an absolute badass with a pistol. You can rock a pistol and you can rock a AR, but your transitions suck. You can dry fire as well. Now it is safe, it's clear. So what can you do? You can still do dry firing as well. So dry firing makes you better at building up that muscle memory, working those, those neural pathways to be able to do stuff that you don't need to think about when you're actually doing it. Let's relate this to aviation. So I come from a aviation background. I used to be a flight instructor and commercial pilot. Don't do that anymore. But I, if I can relate this, it's the same as flying in a simulator. So if you're flying in a simulator, it's not the same as doing the real thing, exactly like dry firing is. But it, it makes you a whole lot better at doing the real thing. So now you're rocking the pistol, you're rocking the uh, carbine or semi-auto AR type of rifle, but you battle with the transitions. So start doing transitions. It's not nice doing something you suck at. Everyone likes doing stuff that makes them feel good. And you, you, everyone needs their, their ego to be, to be boosted. But doing the stuff that's hard and you need to work hard at, that's going to be a challenge, that's going to make you better. So if I'm going, all right, still clear. So run dry, I need to get rid of this and then I can go to my pistol. Working those transitions is going to be so good and making a better shooter overall. Doing the same thing again, get rid of it. And the great thing is about video footage, I've spoken about this in other videos as well. It's taking videos of yourself, you can see where your inefficiencies are. Doing this on the range as well. Record yourself and identify, identify those inefficiencies. Now let's go to rifles. Now this is my rifle I use for competitions. If you suck at firing free-handed, so this is clear and safe, chamber is clear, you need to do this more. So what happened is when I started my, my rifle shooting journey, I really sucked at free-handed shooting because this is arguably the most difficult part of rifle shooting. What I did was, I started dry firing a whole lot. What I did then, is when I went to the range, I used to just do free hand shooting. What happened then, is I decided that I'm going to do a free handed hunt. So what we do is, um, we did some culling, we did some culling on a farm, family, friends of ours. And what I did is I hunted all the animals free-handed, walking. So walk and stalk, all shots were taken free-handed. 
So you know what, what big of a boost that was for me? And just because I put in the time, I was able to shoot all those animals free-handed, standing. Now I don't want you to go on, on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, be a David Goggins and go absolutely crazy with fitness or absolutely crazy with whatever you're doing. Just balance. So as we spoke about the specializing part, now I want you to identify what you suck at. So we did that in specializing as well. But identify what you suck at and what you really hate doing, what, what makes you lazy. So if it's just you're not using your time economically or just not exercising, not carrying what you want to or what you should be carrying, everyday carry is a lifestyle as well. It's not an easy lifestyle. It's easy just to put on your pants, put on your shirt, your shoes and go. It's a lot harder putting on your firearm each day, putting on your knife each day just because you might need it. Um, a whole lot of stuff like your tunicate as well. This is something I suck at. This is something that I'm lazy at. Because it is difficult carrying a tourniquet, I haven't found a company or um, a tool that makes it easier to carry a tourniquet. Um, if I'm not carrying the um, a bending style rig with the extra magazine, then I carry this quite easily if I'm using my H minimalist holster. But otherwise it takes up quite a lot of space in your pocket. So a lot of space that you actually don't, don't have. So if I'm carrying a knife, carrying a torch, knife, back pocket, there's not a lot of space, knife, back pocket, there's not a lot of space for two naked. So this is something that I need to work on. I need to go each morning, well, I did the course, I know why it's necessary. I need to put this on every day. Now the problem is I haven't been doing that. Um, that's something that I need to work on, that I need to stop being lazy. So identify, what makes you lazy? Are you lazy? Are you not exercising? Are you lazy not dry firing? Are you lazy not practicing cross-platform use? Are you lazy by not doing empty-handed skills? Do something that puts you out of your comfort zone. Go do some kickboxing, some jiu-jitsu, something that's going to teach you empty-handed skills. Do Krav Maga. Find a reputable place where you can learn empty-handed skills and um, Build on the fitness, build on your knowledge, MTN skills that, that should form the basis of your all your self-defense mentality. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, all those nice things. And then, yeah, as I said, this isn't something that's going to boost your ego. This is uh, something that should be waking you up and should tell you, why are you so lazy? Cheers, guys.